Hello Booktube. There is a bit of a poetry challenge going around on Booktube at the moment and I was challenged to take part by Brian of Bookish and this is, it being June, my Caribathon edition of the poetry challenge. Um, and I'm going to read you just a little, little excerpt from Omeros by Derek Wilcott, um, which I'm buddy reading at the moment with Stephanie Cohen, um, a, a wonderful commenter on um, Butchery videos and a joy to share a complex epic poem with. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, the poem, as you might guess, is inspired by Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey, but it's not a retelling of that. It, 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 it's Walcott's own very rich epic story. The, the centre of the action is on the um, Caribbean island of St Lucia, which is where he um, uh, was born and grew up. Um, but it kind of heads around the world and, yeah, it's brilliant. This um, is a one of the, the lovely dramatic um, description scenes um, in the poem, uh, and it's in the middle of a hurricane. OK. Hector wasn't with Helen. He was with the sea trying to save his canoe when his anchor rope had loosened, but sheets of black rain mercilessly spun the bow back in the wave troughs when he would grope at the mooring and in the brown nut-litter troughs the hull was swamping as bilge whirlpooled round his feet. He saw how every wave crashed, spray high as a house, then the long cannon-loud boom breaking after it, not seeing land through the rain, thinking it was close from the sand churred water, and then he was afraid when he saw how they were heading past the lighthouse that spun in the gusts with the anchor gone, the boat keeling to the gunwale. So he shifted his weight. He paddled hard with the short oar to come about, but he paddled there, the wave crests brownish white, churning with wrenched palm fronds. He stood up with the oar, rocking on the keelboard. Then he sat, his soul wet and shaking. He crept to the bow, then dived ashore. But the singing, spinning stern clubbed him, so he stayed under the debris to find some calm and depth. But the more he dived, the faster the current spun him. Thunder and lightning cracked, and he saw the canoe founder without any grief. He rode a trough for a while, paddling on his back to measure the right rhythm of the crests, then slid down a slow-gathering wall like a surfer. Once he caught the beat, he could swim with the crumbling surf, not against the sea's will, letting it spin him if it chose, even if it chose to treat him like its garbage. Then he felt the swirl of fine sand and staggered up straight in the shallows. So close to drowning and had to abandon his canoe. Um, Walcott is a tremendous writer and um, uh, I will no doubt enthuse about Omeros more when I come to um, wrap up the month of June 